I remember I said that, you know, you know how long good deeds for the earth are not being done because you're busy learning and living on Bible. And yeah, who you're really doing good deeds for and who should be doing the good deeds. And that person ought to be God. I mean, after all, deeds that you can do can't quite possibly be as good as deeds God can do. But I sort of skipped over that and said, well, who's, who should you be doing good deeds for? And the answer has to first be God. And then the answer was, well, how do you do a good deed for God? Well, what kind of good deed does he like? I mean, if he doesn't like it, it's not going to be any good. Hebrews 11.6, learning and living on Bible. Matthew 4.4, 4, always occurring. Because every moment forever lives to him. So learning to think like Christ, even when you're trying and failing, those are all those moments you're learning and living on Bible. And okay, you pasted the sweetheart soap raw. But you tried. They will be forever alive to God, those moments. So they please him, right? Hebrews 11.6 says they do. Thinking and learning to think like Christ even when you fail is more pleasing than anything else because his thinking paid for sins. And God will see to it that you learn to actually think like Christ does. Keep on thinking this in you which is also in Christ Jesus, Philippians 2.5-10. The Holy Spirit just threw that at me. There you go. It's even a command. Christ in you, the confidence of glory. Just threw that at me. See, that's where the glory comes from. Okay, so now we get back to, okay, fine, but see, the world isn't getting the benefit of your attention. And just like Satan said in Matthew 4, sort of voce, fine, you're fasting. Fasting in the ancient world in the Mosaic Law was done so you could spend more time studying Bible. That was what it was for. So you didn't have to spend time on food. You trusted God to keep your body together while you didn't eat so that you could study more. Okay, Christ, you're fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Oh yeah, very noble. You're studying scripture. But, um, excuse me. Why not speak these stones into bread, like for the whole world? Because you know what? You're doing this thing for yourself, and oh yeah, okay, I understand you want to know God and everything, but everybody else is kind of starving down here. Are you really as loving as you claim to be? You know, it's really a, a backstab at God the Father, because God the Father basically ordered the 40 days and 40 nights. So Christ would be so weak that he would easily cave into Satan's temptation, as weak as a body can be. And Satan said, well, okay, fine, you're doing all this noble stuff for Father, but what's Father doing for the world? The people starving down here. The people hurting down here. They go to hell if they don't believe in you. Why don't you feed them? Why don't you give them reason to believe? Why don't you uh, take over the kingdoms of the world? I'll give them reason. I'll give you the kingdoms. See? That's my good deed on behalf of the human race. Where's yours? You get that? Okay. So here you are learning and living on Bible and actually doing what God wants. Matthew 4.4 4, always occurring. Therefore replying to Satan indirectly. Even though you're not thinking about it that way. I'm going to learn and live on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I'm not going to live, you know, care about whether or not I eat. That's for God to decide. It's secondary. 
The belly is secondary to Bible. So, God first. It's up to God to decide. I want to really circle on this. It's up to God to decide what bread you get. You're picking Bible, not bread. You're picking Bible over bread. That's what Christ did. If you pick Bible over bread, honey, you have to be able to survive to study it, don't you? What did Christ say? Seek first the kingdom of God and what? All these things will be added unto you. Well, they have to be, don't they? Can you study Bible if you're passed out? No. Okay, so, like Christ said, you know, here's the lilies of the field and the sparrows and the hairs on your head. God's taking care of them. Seek first the kingdom and everything else will come in its time and place. And if you're not, what's the point of eating? Now, we got that part. If you're learn if you're learning and living on Bible, if you're seeking Bible first, you do need a job, clothing, shelter, food, so that you can have the time and the means to study. Got that? No bricks without straw. But if you don't want to study the Bible, well, God will still provide for you anyway, but sure would be nice if the kind of provision you got was based on Bible, don't you think? So now let's look at the flip side, because this is the most important part. That the, the, the argument the bitching that Satan's doing. He said, well, you know, here are all these believers just studying and you're providing for all their needs because they're studying because you're so pleased. Okay, but you're ba all these believers are basically guilty the way Christ is guilty because they're putting God before everything else and the world is basically getting shafted mm, well of course the premise of that is wrong because if the world were interested in Bible too God would be doing for them what he's doing for me I have to have body and soul together I have to be able to pay bills I have to be able to eat and be in reasonable enough health in order to study Bible so I get those things. Now if I didn't want to, well, then aren't I voting that God not be involved in my life? Right? If I don't want to study Bible, then I don't really want to be involved with God. I don't want to learn God, so I'm not voting for Him to provide for me, am I? If I'm voting for Bible, I need Him to provide for me in order to get the time for that. It's a question whether he'll agree to it still. It's up to him. But he says he will. Okay, and if I'm not doing that well, then I'm really not voting to have God's involvement in my life, am I? So, how much bread should I get then? I obviously don't need it as much, or I don't care if I get it from him. Maybe I want to get it myself my own way. Okay, so he stands off. So when the world is hungry, maybe that's why. It doesn't want God to give them the bread. A few times he did it in the Gospels, it freaked everybody out so much that, that most of the disciples left him. Only the twelve remained. So, 
That's one answer to the question about why people are hungry. There's another one. Okay, Satan. All these people are following Matthew 4.4 4, always occurring. I made it into a standard. My son fulfilled that standard. These people are getting his head in their heads. And no, they're just sitting around a whole bunch. They're not running around doing what the Muslims do. They're not running around doing what the carnal Christians do. They're not running around doing what the Baha'i and the unbeliever and all their little moral charities. These believers of mine are just learning me. I am God after all. I ought to get first priority, but, hey, tell you what, because all these people, you know, it's really like, I don't know, three, four, five thousand on the planet at any given time, are really studying, it might be more than five thousand, fifty, let's say fifty, can't be more than that. So all these 50,000 people scattered all over the world are really studying to learn me rather than to be smart or think well of themselves. Tell you what I'll do. I'll just make crops work. I'll just give the rain when it needs to be given. In all the areas where these people are, I'll make their economies better. I'll make their politicians more competent. I'll make their hospitals work better. I'll make sure that the electricity is better. I'll give a few of them, or well, not necessarily them, but maybe, a few of them I'll give some money to. And a whole bunch of them, the companies they work for, I'll just give a lot of money to those companies. I'll make their products successful. Throw in a couple of inventions and discoveries and stuff like that. As for war, I'll keep their enemy, the enemies of their nations I'll keep at bay. In other words, for the sake of these 50,000 people all over the world, story of Sodom and Gomorrah, when Abraham was reasoning with God, for the sake of those few I'll bless the whole world. God will bless the whole world. That's a contract that was given to Israel, passes on to us. Okay? Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. Israel is still the blessing to the world also. She's not losing out. Paul explains the relationship between the two in Romans 11. So go look that up. But you see the point? You can't make the weather better. You can't make uh, politicians more competent. You can't make, you know, name it. Companies suddenly get a lot of money because they, they make a new invention. You can pray for those things. Ooh. That is something you can do. You can please God with your thinking and you can pray for whatever it is you're not able to do because you're too busy studying. And you can invoke, like Daniel did in Daniel 9, contractual provisions in the Bible of God's provision. What did Daniel invoke? Hi, God. 1 Kings 9 says, if anybody looks toward the temple and says, we're wrong, please rebuild, you will do it. That's 1 Kings 9. Daniel uses it. He's reading Isaiah. I'm not Isaiah. Jeremiah 25, 29, 31, when he does that. And Jeremiah 2. Daniel invokes the contract. 
in Daniel 9. Rebuilt. Because as long as the temple could go back and stay standing, then the world was allowed to live. Okay, well, but there are other contracts too. Like Leviticus 26, Deuteronomy 28, ask anything in my name and I'll do it. So you can invoke those contracts. You can ask God anything in his name. God can just flat out say hi because Brainout is studying today. I'm so pleased with that because it's Matthew 4, 4 always occurring. I think I'll just bless the entire city of Houston. That's how it's always worked. So you see, I know this has been really long audio, but you see the extreme difference between what we think are good deeds and what they really are. First of all, you can't do a good deed as good as God can do. Secondly, the deeds that God does do because you just simply study Bible gigantic. You can ask him for anything. So you don't have to do it yourself. And besides, your time is kind of encumbered because the first commandment says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. And what? Thinking. can't do that if you don't have anything to think. can't do that if you don't have the right thinking in your head. can't get the right thinking in your head unless you study. And that pleases him, Hebrews 11, 6. It's the only thing you can do for God. Okay, so now he can do something for the world that you can't do. And after all, you know, your time is taken up, so any good deeds you could have done, well, you can't do those either. But you can ask. And then he can just unilaterally decide what he's going to do. Blessing everybody around you because you're doing this. Matthew 4.4 4, always occurring. You can see why he picked something big to do. That moment when you first learned 1 John 1.9. 1, that moment when you started using it. Those are memories in our parlance, but to God, they're always occurring. It's of infinite value. Infinite because it lasts forever. Infinite because the quality is God quality, because God's enabling this to happen to you. Only God can make you learn Bible. And infinite in quality also, because the recipient's enjoyment is of infinite quality. So yeah, you could have given a cup of water in the Lord's name in order to feel good about yourself, which would have tainted the entire action. Well, you could be learning and living on Bible, which can change the GDP of an entire country. You could pray for people in Africa to get the Bible. Remember? Seek ye first the kingdom. Pray for them to get Bible. Pray for Bible to break out everywhere that everybody can get it. Pray for the missionaries. If you pray for the Bible distribution and teaching and learning first, then all that economic stuff has to follow in order to support the Bible learning. You got that? Now you're acting like a king. You're asking, you're learning, you're thinking, you're sitting. You're, it's all in your head. And the pressure is enormous, like I've already described. Constant zigzag, 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 thrust parry. Because, you know, Satan and company are not idle. They're going to attack you with thoughts. If God can send you thoughts, so can they. Okay, fine, but it's all in your head. That's all that goes with you to heaven anyway is your soul. 
really use your song. Okay, that's an entirely different and executively higher, royally higher good deed done by God than anything anybody on this planet can do. And the only kind that does good for God. Because of the thinking. That's learning Christ thinking. And yeah, okay, you're making lots of sweetheart soap and putting the cows on. Because that's the only way you know how to do for mommy in the beginning. But that's okay. You'll get taught how to do it better. You'll get taught how to make other gifts in your thinking. And in all events, it is completely the opposite of what Christianity thinks good deeds are, of what it thinks spirituality is. Christianity says... Oh, you got to do stuff with your body or you're not a good Christian. God says anything you do with your body goes into your mouth and out what? That's what Christ said. It goes into your mouth and is excreted. Comes out the other end. It's what comes out of your mouth that defiles you. Out of your mouth. Meaning your thoughts. But Christianity doesn't care about your thoughts. Christianity only cares about whether you look good to other Christians. And in that sense, Christianity is just like all the other religions because they all stress the same thing. Do, 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 do. Coming out the other end. Christianity says, if you are regarded as superior to another person, that's good. God says, I'm making you superior to everybody else and you're going to hate it. So you understand why I came down to the human race rather than lord it over the human race. Being better than somebody else hurts. Yeah. And once you find out you are, really are better than others, you're going to hate it. Because it's separating. It's isolating. It's like, oh, God, I can't take it. I'm rich. This person is poor. Please, can I just give money to them so they don't have to be poor? I can't stand it that they're poor. No, you can't give money to them. It's not a money problem. Okay, God, can I pray for it? Yes, you can pray for it. And now I will do it. See the difference? So all those Christians running around with their charities and stuff, huffing and puffing and putting $10 in the collection plate, they could have spent 30 seconds and said what I just said now. You don't think God heard me just now when I was talking on this audio? Of course he didn't. It's not the only time I ask him. I'm always asking him. Yeah. 30 seconds I ask him, well, he does it. God says, light be, Genesis 1-2. God says, Kenya, okay, I'm going to provide. Whole GDP of the country is going to be affected. I want, brain out wants Bible in Kenya, so that's where it's going to be. And the whole GDP and the whole political situation and all the economy and everything else has to be improved now. Because brain not asked for it. What's a big good deed? And who did it? Not me. I asked for it. It's going to have my name on it forever because it's Matthew 4.4 4 always occurring. You getting the drift of the difference? So this was a head-to-head, -head, apples to apples, long-winded comparison of God deeds versus good deeds and good deeds by who and good deeds for who with the keynote being Matthew 4 4 
always occurring in Hebrews 11, 6. Because the kings sit and learn to think, and the peasants, well, they do, do, do. Now, who's got the money? Who's got the power? Who can really feed the world? And what do you feed them in order to feed them? Bible first. Matthew 4, 4. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. Whoa, now we have a better idea what that means, huh? Ta-ta.